call this uh, regular uh, September 5th meeting of the DRB to order. Um, and um, welcome, everybody. We're just, uh, as you know, waiting for Sharon. She's got some technical difficulties, um, but uh, we'll get going with uh, Meredith's review of the uh, remote meeting procedures. Yes. All Where's right. So. <laughs> All right, let me get to my screen share. Oh, sorry, give me a second. I'm working on some. All right, so this the screen share. Hey, Sharon, awesome. All right, so for anybody who hasn't done this before, the screen share is more for people who are um, viewing this meeting over Orca Media because it is being live streamed over their channel. Um, so for anyone who is watching tonight's meeting over Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's Development Review Board meeting via the Zoom platform. You can do this using both using a video option um, over your computer or smartphone by typing this link here into your web browser. Um, and I will get a little notification that you want to get into the meeting and I will let you in. Um, and with that, you'll be able to see everything on your screen as well as um, raise your hand and get called on and ask questions. Alternatively, you can dial in this phone number and when prompted, put in this meeting ID. Um, and again, I'll, I'll get a little notification that you want to come into the meeting and I'll let you in. Um, and with that one, you don't get the um, video option, but you still will be able to hear everything and talk to us. Um, if you are trying to access the meeting and having problems, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. Um, for those who are attending via Zoom, Zoom, know that turning your video on is optional. Um, please, for everyone attending, keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will help re uh, reduce background noise. And know that the Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Um, if you have a question or comment about an actual agenda item, please raise your hand, either physically or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar, and then wait for the chair to call on you. Um, and then once you are called on, please state your name. Um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain. Um, I would get notification of that via my email. Um, and especially because the online access, the remote access is the only way to access this meeting. Um, if there are members of the public who can't get in, we have to make sure that we continue to the meeting so that they have an opportunity to submit their comments. I will now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Great. Uh, Looks like we do have a perfect seven uh, voting members on this evening, unless someone sees anyone else one, on here. Two, three, four. Six, seven. We actually have eight. Eight. Yep. We have eight because Jean's on as well. So uh, right. we just have to make sure we know. So to, unless somebody has a reason to recuse themselves from the application, oh. Jean yep. would be on to participate, but would um, not be voting when it comes to the actual application. Okay. Is that... Uh... Okay, with members of the board for establishing that a regular member is a meeting and Gene is listening in as an alternate. Great. Sounds like everybody's on board. Uh, sounds good. Um, Kevin, just for uh, smoothness here, we'll still accept that motion. Um, we had another plan, but uh, that, that, that makes it easier. Yeah, I'll, I'll withdraw. No, we still accept that motion. It'll make it smoother. <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine. Then my motion stands. Um, you may want to... That'll have to be on the on the record, I think, because I don't think that was yeah. on the that yeah. was before we actually started. Motion to move the elections to the end of this evening's meeting. Ah, I second that motion. Okay, motion by Rob, I guess. <laughs> second by Sharon. Uh, uh, all, those, all those in favor? All right, Alex, Kevin, Catherine. Sharon. Michael, how do you vote? Yes. Joe? Aye. Okay. Um, we have an, the approved agenda, moving the elections to the end of uh, 
this meeting. So new officers you know, will take effect uh, at the next regular meeting of the of the DRB. Um, great. Um, so on to comments from the chair. Um, so yeah, just uh, um, too many uh, comments. Uh, I will not be at the next meeting of the DRB. I'll be out of the country. Uh, and um, so that uh, that's my announcement. Uh, I don't know if there's any other uh, uh, news. Um, I think we will, you know, acknowledge that uh, the regular annual elections of the DRB, uh, you know, were supposed to happen in. You know, in August, um, we did not do that. We did not have that second meeting in August. Um, and so those elections will be, um, you know, this evening. Um, we moved it to the end um, to so to ensure a smooth transition of, you know, handoff. Um, the new officers will take in effect at the next regular meeting of the DRB. <laughs> and um, with that being said, does that board members have any questions on that? All right, great. We'll move to the 190 River Street uh, application. And who is here to uh, present on that application? Uh, I'm, my name is Chris Austin. I work with Grenier Engineering, and uh, we're the consultant for Barrett Enterprises. And I have Kelly Barrett here uh, with Barrett Enterprises. And Perfect. if I can just introduce myself as well, I'm Brooke Dingledean with Dalson Giacomo de Tora and McQuesten, and I'm counseled assisting Mr. Barrett as well. Wonderful. Um, so Mr. Austin and Mr. Barrett, anyone else uh, plan on speaking on this application? Um, we will acknowledge that uh, it's been tradition. We do not swear counsel in for testimony. Um, is that correct, Brooke? That would be appropriate. I won't be testifying <laughs> as facts. I may just be assisting by providing a legal argument or to clarify uh, some issues from the zoning ordinance if there are any questions. All right, thank you. Um, so anyone other than uh, Chris and Kelly to be uh, sworn in and speaking on this application? No, okay. Um, so, um, Chris and Kelly, um, gonna raise your right hand and swear you in as a witness. So, uh, those interested in providing testimony on this application, would you please raise your right hand to be sworn in as a witness? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? You do. Wonderful. Um, all right. So, I guess Meredith can give a brief summary here. I'm sure we'll uh, be back to ask questions about specific sections of the of the regs here. So you don't need to go in too much detail, but uh, I will let you go ahead. Awesome. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll keep this really brief. Um, you know, this application is before the board in large part because it is requesting for um, new buildings that are going to contain a conditional use, the mini storage units. Um, it's also major site plan because both of the buildings being constructed, each of them are more than 2,000 square feet. So that triggers major site plan review, which only the board can do. Um, in my staff report and in the, the public hearing notice, we had also put in that it was requesting a waiver of the 10, uh, 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 sorry, a 10 foot waiver of the rear setback. Um, as was, was pointed out to me today, um, and none of us had caught this um, until uh, Brooke brought it up or, or somebody brought it to Brooke and Brooke called me. Um, in the last regulation change, the Eastern Gateway had a new type of setback created for it and none of the other zoning rigs, none of the other zoning districts have, which is a railroad setback of five feet. So, and even though I copied and pasted it and stuck it right in the staff report, just didn't even see it. Um, so there actually isn't a need for a rear setback waiver. That doesn't have to be dealt with. Because we're talking major site plan, because we're talking the conditional use, there's still a little bit of a discussion about whether the um, setback distance that is on that shown on that site plan between the property line, which is really close to the railroad, um, and maybe the edge of the um, that rear 
drive access space, that one-way drive, um, provides enough room for for snow. You know, make sure make sure the building and the road together don't get so close to that rear area that there's not enough room for snow when the plow, snow plows go through. Um, but the design is shown doesn't seem to be that issue. I would just say that you know you've you, you're not you're not gonna you're not anyway. Point is that rear setback waiver thing. You don't actually have to deal with that anymore. Um, and then two other notes, and I put this in the email that went out and the, the packet on the website is updated, but a reminder that we do have a comment from the public that is not reflected in the staff report um, and that the applicants provided a uh, updated impervious cover document that um, is not reflected in the staff report. So they provided more detail on um, how the um, coverage limit is met. Um, and so that's a situation where the, the site as a whole is still over that 50% coverage max, but they're actually reducing the existing impervious cover. So they're making a existing nonconformity better with the new plan. There you go. That's just what I've got. Well, I, just, well, I, I did receive that comment. Um, that comment was from um, Ruben Sherman, um, and also did get sent to every member of the board pre meetings. Yep. Don't feel the need to read it, but um, just highlighting that it's there um, and everyone uh, has it to uh, guide their questions to that this evening. Awesome. Uh, Thanks, Rob. So, Chris and Kelly, um, feel free to take the, uh, take the reins here and uh, tell us a little bit about your project. Yeah. So, we have. Um... Kind of just, I think probably everyone's sort of aware where this is, but 190 River Street is the uh, old trading post building right along River Street being Route 2 and the aforementioned railroad that bisects this property. Barrett's actually on two parcels here. To be clear, we are dealing with the uh, southern parcel adjacent to River Street. They have a second parcel with other buildings and uh, across the railroad tracks, the railroad is an own strip, so there are two pieces of land. We're only involved on the southern portion here. Um, the site consists of a paved driveway off River Street with the uh, trading post on the east, uh, the railroad tracks to the north, and an existing gravel parking lot to the west of that uh, access drive. And within that existing gravel parking lot is where we've proposed the two mini self-storage warehouse buildings. Uh, we're building one along um, the frontage of River Street. Uh, that'll be a single load. Um, in other words, there'll be no unit doors on the street side. You would only have unit doors on the interior there. Um, building one is 3,400 square feet, um, as shown there. Building uh, two is 2,600 square feet. That'll have units on both sides there. Um, which as you can see from the site plan, we have planned vehicle circulation to be able to circle building two completely. And there's plenty of room with 27 feet between the buildings to maneuver in between the buildings, turn in and out as needed. Quite a bit of turning movement in there. Um, as Meredith said, we've, uh, as part of this, we prepared an impervious uh, cover exhibit that shows that uh, we are de slightly decreasing the amount of impervious on the site. This is mainly due to the fact that we're carving out a corner of that old parking lot to put in the stormwater management system in the northwest corner of that gravel lot. Um, and so essentially there's a slight net loss of impervious. Um, the buildings will be placed on you know, mainly what is already gravel parking. Um, so we have site circulation there. We have access to the buildings at 27 and 15 feet wide in the two drive lanes. Um, the buildings are detailed on that site plan with a end elevation and the side elevation. Um, nice cupola plan there. Uh, we're looking for a clapboard sided look. Um, you know, kind of gray colors, red doors, kind of a standard storage building look there. Um, the building's only, I think, 13 or so feet tall. They're pretty low impact structures, uh, 20 feet wide. 
Um, the package also includes a uh, landscaping plan prepared by Knopf Landscaping, a licensed landscape architect, and uh, we provide quite a bit of uh, new plantings along the building side there to provide adequate screening. Um, with other highlights here, uh, we have an all new lighting plan for the buildings um, that meets the lumen regulations. We have a photometric plan there that shows that light is not cast really off the site. They are downcast and fully shielded fixtures that are gonna be within the eaves of the buildings. Um, so this will achieve site security um, and light for any users at night, uh, but it'll, you know, it's a really a low light scenario with the full shielding of the eaves. Soft um, light fixtures are chosen. And uh, there is an existing site light uh, provided by Green Mountain Power on a utility pole there that uh, based on neighbor comments and uh, thought process of our new lighting plan that we would just offer up to remove that larger security light uh, once the buildings are constructed. There wouldn't be much need for the additional security light once the buildings are lit in there. Um, so essentially, between the landscaping, the stormwater improvements, and uh, the lighting improvements, we feel this project really uh, improves the area and uh, provides needed storage space for renters right in Montpelier. Um, you know, a lot of apartment space in town. We uh, The Barretts are very well versed with how storage goes. This is, seems to be a needed product that we don't have any fear of uh, filling the building with tenants. Right, Kelly? No problem. Um, so as a, as a big overview, I think that's kind of the snapshot. Um, and uh, Well, I guess the other one highlight thing we want to touch on is we have planned for uh, snow storage removal. Um, it was mentioned by Meredith in the staff report. We can point that out on the site plan, but we have planned for it to be in the southwest corner, the southeast corner. Um, along not over the line into the railroad but along the railroad land behind our curb we've created space there for snow storage and they have ample storage across the driveway over behind the trading post if uh, as needed so we have a pretty good strategy there for keeping snow clear out of the units um i just well a couple questions um just since I've got your impervious uh, sketch up, up here. Um, as far as your stormwater practices and what you're proposing, that's only for the stuff um, that's like on this portion of the parcel that's being developed, not proposing anything um, on the rest of the parcel. We are not. That's correct. This would be to manage the stormwater created by the redevelopment of the buildings within the gravel lot that triggers the need for a state stormwater permit. Um, I mean, as engineers, we would design a, some kind of drainage plan in any case, but yeah, we're required by the state to have a stormwater management system due to redevelopment of that gravel lot with the buildings. So I had a question about the existing development as it is today. Are any of the buildings existing existing buildings impacted are they you know either through modification or tear down no no there's no proposed change to any other buildings and uh, the only building on this parcel is the trading post the other buildings across the railroad are separate item but yeah no no removals proposed okay <clears throat> Yes, uh, we can uh, get into the staff report. Any uh, highlights, Meredith, you've caught by their proposal? or? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the board needs to, I mean, it's sort of summarized there at the end of the staff report, the key key items that the, the board needs to deal with. Um, you know, there's there's determinations that I'm just not allowed to make um, because I'm the zoning administrator. So that's the the conditional use. Um, there's a couple of questions in here about. Um, I mean, we can skip the setback stuff. Um, so that's great. Um, 
you know, there were some questions about just whether or not certain certain landscaping items are met. Um, but it's I, th I think you're going to have to go through the staff report. Um, there's not because yeah. there's a lot of yeah. there's a lot of individual little items that the board has to make clear determinations on, or at least make sure they have enough information um, to make those determinations. Yes. Um, I just, uh, I guess the, I was a little confused on the, uh, um, the mixed use requirement in many, many warehouse versus light manufacturing <laughs> and, uh, could expand upon a little bit, not light manufacturing, sorry. Uh, uh the, the requirement that the warehouse is on, uh, is it it's, that it's a combined mixed use? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, the thing is that uh only came up that was only really an issue when you get to the rear setback waiver and about okay. whether or not the waiver is necessary for the continued use of the parcel and you don't have to worry about that anymore Got it. because it doesn't need that wet waiver because it meets the railroad setback waiver Got it. so you can just you can just skip that whole section of red on page five all right and four four and five yeah <laughs> all right um so that brings us uh, to our staff report review to start on well, the bottom of page five, um, because you're still mm -hmm. looking at the side yard setback. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. no. no, nope. Fair that's time. all rear. That, that's all the rear setback. So again, yes. Yeah, skip over. Skip over five. Skip over six. Um, actually, sorry. Six is where you have the coverage. Yeah. Right. So we didn't have that coverage information. Um, as long as the board is happy with the um, reduced coverage amount, right? It still doesn't meet the 50% standard or whatever. What's the standard? Yeah, 50%. Um, yeah. It's still going to cover more than 50% of the parcel with impervious, but it's going to be less than it is now. So as long as the board is okay with that, that that's the out only outstanding dimensional issue. So that seems good. It seems like an improvement and we could just roll with that. Would be my take. I would I would tend to agree. I think my one last question on that is about um, just the the direction of the water flow. So like currently, just currently, basically all the water on the site flow to that catch basin in the corner where you're proposing to send almost all of it, or is it sort of sheet flow off in some spaces? Uh, I think it's a combination there of sheet flow, but yeah, um, as part of the site design here, um, it's a pretty flat site, so you don't see a lot of contour lines, but we have directional arrows with high points, elevations listed, and drainage, so we oh. are slightly grading the site. You know, there isn't a lot of fill coming in, but we're grading the site to make water move to where we need it to move to our retention area. Um, yep. And if you look at that, we have it split because it's hard to sheet flow all of it in you know one place. So we actually wrap it around a swale on the north side that hits a, the curb that we've install, uh, proposed to install. Water will ride that curb and be graded to get into the stormwater area. And in the center aisle, you see there we have a majority of it draining straight to it so that'll be graded parking lot you know minor grading you're in a parking lot but it'll be shimmed to drain to that um stormwater catchment area if, if i might ask a question relative to stormwater um how did um, how did the site the, the, the existing site perform during the july floods did you see any flooding, Kelly? There was no flooding anywhere. Okay. On any of the property. Well, so, so it was sheeting some water fairly efficiently. I mean, you might have had a small ponding in there when it was yeah. yeah. rain or not. It's not even. Okay. Not even. There was there wasn't no there was no major incur, uh, infringement then or the only the only place, Kevin, where where there was a problem was um the uh, culvert over by uh, Vivian's house had overflowed and ran the road towards uh, our entrance and towards the car wash, but it just flowed right down the driveway. 
it flowed right. So it didn't. Yeah, I, mean, I, I didn't. I didn't notice any any major. Um, I didn't notice any change from the, the uh, you know post post event. So I just wanted to check that with you. Yeah, we lucked out. There was. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I think the rationale about the impervious exhibit and the stormwater practices here seems seems reasonable. Board members uh, have any other questions on that? And uh, just, you know, I guess the next part of that is that I guess, you know, you will get a state stormwater permit, I guess, and then the Public Works will do their final review of this unless they've already completed that. I believe they said they had no comments. I don't know if they do a okay. further review, Meredith, but yeah, okay. No, no. I mean, it's because you're not tapping into the city's system. Um, they're, they're not going to really have anything about the stormwater. But, uh, we are required to get a state stormwater discharge permit, so we will be yeah. doing once we receive you know this approval. Yeah, and then, I mean, what, once you get that, you can always just send it to us, and we'll send it and put it into our files with the permit file just so it's easy for people to find it um although those files are going to end up being um electronic we're yeah. we're not going to be keeping lots of paper files anymore yeah those are all by the state rules are required to be recorded in the land records as well but yeah yep. we'll forward a copy to someone yeah okay um sounds good so uh we're moving uh moving down to um is for on uh, page eight, um, access and circulation, you know, at the site. Um, I think that, uh, you know, we can use some, uh, you know, judgment here, but uh, it'd be worth, I guess, having a little bit of discussion about the parking. Um, you had mentioned in your testimony about the turning radiuses and the width of the paths and whatnot. Um, and that all seems to, seems to make sense. Um, I think the board does have a, you know, sort of a decision to make to whether the proposed use of <laughs> requires parking or not. And uh, I think that um, staff made a pretty good comment about it more of a loading for these units um, is what the requirement is and not parking any cars for an extended period of time. Um, yeah, I think that's correctly stated in that staff comment. Um, basically, the Barrett's wouldn't allow any long-term parking because that would just gum up works. Um, so there is no real long-term parking required for the use. It is a area outside your unit just needs to be provided access to get your door open. You park there for the amount of time you feel like your stuff and you leave. Um, so it is more of a load unload zone. And uh, um, the Barrett's have many of these sites in central Vermont. My company's actually done the engineering and permitting on quite a number of them as well. Um, the, uh, he's retired now, but the princi former principal of my firm built a bunch of these sites here in Waterbury and Middlesex that the Barrett's now own. Um, so we have quite a bit of experience on these site layouts um, and not causing problems and getting people in and out efficiently. A lot of these facilities have a 22 to 24 foot uh, double drive lane in between. Um, so we feel like we've squeezed out a few extra feet on this one at 27 in between the eaves. Um, and that's for where you have access to build the units on each side. Um, and then our drive lane on the north side along the railroad side, we're only accessing, you know, one side of that building. That's a 15 foot wide lane um, there to the eave, which is plenty sufficient to, uh, you know, fit a car in, a car can go by. Um, you know, if people have their U-Haul trucks that they rent, they drive up next to their unit, and there's always room to drive by them. Um, I have what thirty or f I have thirty or forty of these units right here at my office property. Uh, I've been here twenty five years. I've never seen a person argue about uh, not being able to get their unit or being blocked off, or there's a traffic problem. Um, so we're highly confident in the site circulation design here based on uh, experience and uh, just those kind of measurements fit fit vehicles very efficiently. Okay. Are these units when uh, this, 
folks permitted to store cars there if they wanted to? Is that a any of them big enough for that, or is that not something that happens? Yeah, I believe that is possible. Yep, um, a unit's often basically planned out at ten feet wide, which is wide enough for any vehicles. And uh, building one, for instance, will have a twenty foot depth because those are that's a single load building. So, yeah, I mean, vehicle storage could take place. Um. Okay, and uh, looks like we already uh, talked about the uh, the snow storage here. It seems like you've got a plan to have it in a couple different places. Um, I'm guessing you could um, update your site plan to just have that called out um, exactly where it is for the for the final final submittal. Um, yeah, if and, you need. Sure. And, um, I don't see any other other topics there. Um, so we talked some about, um, well, you talked some about a landscaping plan. Um, can we just uh, pull that up real quick and just take a look at what, what's proposed? Yeah, I can do it. Let me just scroll the right one so that when I pop it up, it's, I'm not making everybody dizzy. You'll, uh, I think you'll see there in that packet, there's a site plan layout with a legend and a key and it states sizing. The time mm -hmm. of planning, et cetera. And then there's also a, a photo image of, uh, you know, depicting what these proposed plans look like um, yeah. at maturity anyway. Yep. So this is the, um, oh, goodness. It's hard to read the little one and still be able to show everybody the pictures. Um, but this is your, your biggest tree. Um, what is that, the maple? That's the I think oak. there's one oak. Yep. Sorry. One, yep, the swamp one. white oak. Yep. And then you've mm -hmm. got the smaller medium, the medium trees here, then filled in with some arborvitae, I think, with these. Correct. So it's a mix of deciduous and evergreen to yep. create, you know, a seed year round screen there. Um, those are all uh, salt tolerant as well. Um, since we're near the highway and such, that always needs to be planned. And then there's the section of uh, shrubbery planting there. Yep, the hatch marked area. Yeah. Yep. So you essentially, from the street view, we'll have nice uh, flowering and colorful uh, shrubbery. Then you'll have the street trees behind it. That then screen that first building and keep in mind that first building doesn't have any loading or doors on the street side. So essentially the first building also helps screen along with the landscaping activities going on, you know, at people's units within the site. I think it looks like a suitable landscaping plan to me. Um, there's a note here about probably due to the, the age of it, but the, you know, some, there's maybe some non-conformity on the existing, uh, uh, you know, parcel, but um, that doesn't have a concern to me. I think that it looks like you've gone above and beyond here as far as uh, creating some good screening. I think that looks good. Um, so moving on down, um, is the outdoor lighting um and like in your uh, presentation you mentioned uh willingness to remove that green mountain power light that appeared to be what one of the neighbors um comment was concerned about um other than that um i think i saw some like uh cut sheets in here and uh whatnot thank you for that we usually ask for you to provide that later <laughs> yeah I've, I've been asked to follow up with that so many times i try really hard to bring it the first time now <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't always work out depending on where we were at on the design, but yeah, we, we try to get that right in. Um, for this one, it was pretty simple being a can light also. Um, but yeah, so as stated in the original presentation, the security light that's there now has served the Barretts well. It's kept things safe and lit. Um, but, you know, once the buildings are in and they have their own lighting, 
there isn't much need for the security light anymore. So they don't have any issue in just removing it. And uh, I believe that would bring the site into full compliance on uh, lighting, uh, including the existing. Yeah. Yes, Marta. Uh, just as I'm keeping track of things here for at the end, is that removal of that existing security light something that the board wants to have as a condition of approval? Um, or is it just something that the applicant is attesting to and a finding of fact? I mean, if the applicant, <laughs> I would just say if the applicant is already uh, stating that he would remove that uh, without a problem. I, you know, it, why not make it uh, a, uh, a a condition? Yeah. I agree with that. Kevin would, that would, that. Yeah, that would set. I mean, it would keep the, the neighbor happy. Yeah, and then there's documentation. So yeah. Great. No, just just making sure so that we can all make sure we're tallied up at the end when we get to the motion. Yeah. Thank you. you. Meredith, if I could just suggest um, that if, if the condition can indicate the removal post construction so yeah. that the new lighting, <clears throat> pardon me, the new lighting is um, there and up operating before the removal. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Terrific. Yep. So noted. Um, so I had notes here on most of the rest of this about sort of like character of the neighborhood type uh, <laughs> analysis that we're doing. Um, and I think a number of photos were provided of the other, um, you know, you types of buildings and shape of buildings on this particular part. Um, and um, it seems pretty consistent to me. Um, I guess I would flag um, something to the board members. Um, this is, uh, I guess, uh, seems like it's a rarity, an application that did not go through the design review um, committee, right, Meredith? It's not in that uh, section of town. Exactly. Right, but 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 we haven't we haven't had a lot of new buildings over the last five years, um, and we definitely haven't had a lot of major site plan. Um, so we, this is what one of maybe two major site plan that have come to the board um, that haven't been in the design review overlay district. So this and then on the same further down River Street, um, the new building that they put in um, near the roundabout were two of the ones that stick out in my head. It seems it seems like the you know what they're proposing for building buildings looks very much like what is in the neighborhoods there. Um, and the screening also seems like it's going to be a definite boon to the area um and it's not in a design review catchment area is it right yeah and uh, i guess we have one other point here about um you know utilities on the site and uh you know other city services and um how much power of these units ah, probably not much yeah there's almost there's just power to light the led lights which are incredibly efficient light fixtures i mean there's a number of them so there's a load here but it's like less than a standard house for sure um it's probably a hundred amp service i would imagine i'm not an electrician but it's a very small service because the only power is for the light so traditionally on these kind of buildings we usually just see a um you know essentially a wire coming to it like there's barely a breaker box right kelly yeah it's just a it's just a 110 wire yeah it goes underground yeah an underground wire comes up to the building and a conduit um usually there's a little plastic conduit panel in the corner of a building there's no big uh you know electrical panel with breakers because there's nothing but the one service really yeah how much uh water is there is there water service on the property at all or is it just a couple spigots you have over at the training post you must have oh, just a not. bathroom right well we got we got we have water at the training post there's a fire hydrant right there 
Yeah, there's a hydrant on the site, correct? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we got water. Pretty it's, not it's not like uh, it's not like uh, folks would come in and plug their pressure washer in and you know, pressure wash their car and garage yeah. or anything like that. Oh yeah, no, no, there's no hose bib available to the public. No, certainly not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, there, would there even be an outlet for somebody to use? You don't even no. provide those, do you? No. no. Yeah, there won't even be outlets for people to use. Um, so it'd be a pretty limited area where people could perform that kind of maintenance, I would say, because they won't have services to do so. Right. Moving right along here. Um, so I, I've scrolled down to page 23 um, of the staff report here, and, um, you know, I think there's a, um, we're supposed to advise on whether the impacts of the use will be consistent with the neighborhood, um, and I think we can very much determine Yes, this is consistent with the neighborhood. Um, my my ultimate question was: Was someone could come in and rent one of these units and uh, you know do something that would be uh, you know not necessarily just like the storage unit use? But it sounds like without any water or really power access, we're pretty limited on the what they <laughs> what they could or could not do. <laughs> uh, and uh, and so that was that was my only my only concern. But it seems to be not a concern anymore. Yeah, I would say with limited ability to plug stuff in, yeah, it'd be hard for people to do too many things but store their stuff. I would okay. agree with that. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, well, I, like I have seen facilities that provide a heated unit power and other things, and there tends to be some, you know, more activity at those, but that isn't the case here. Um, okay. But I think we're down to the, the final sort of like summary here of our uh, of our key points. Um, what, um, what were the final numbers on the uh, the proposed coverage um, in lot area? Just so we can get those. Sure. In yeah, here. I have it here. Um, it's a one point seven acre lot, you know, plus or minus, uh, based on tax records, essentially. Uh, it's a 1.18 acres of a existing impervious, um, removing 0 0.054. Um, there's a slight amount of new going back in on the other side of 0 0.018. So the total is 1.15 acres, which is, you know, less than the uh, existing as previously stated. I'm just going to do a quick screen share so that everybody can see where that chart is. Um, so this is on that impervious exhibit yep. here. So that gives you the existing impervious, the total that was removed, the total new. And so you get to a reduced impervious surface. They're reducing it by over uh, 1,500 square feet. Um, of impervious is actually being removed and instead will be either planted area or um, the stormwater retention pond, which we count as pervious because it is retention. It's a place for the water to be retained. And there's um, some evaporation, but also just some slow percolation, I think. Is that correct, Chris? It is, yep. Um, yep. I would anticipate some amount of plant life in there soaking up water too. That's part of the... Oh, water. right. Um, but not necessarily but yeah either way you're correct yep so we count we count that as as a pervious area um and just for the image so this dotted area here is all the existing impervious and so here is where they're adding take, taking away the pervious or impervious surface right and then here is a little bit of you know, addition. new addition, um, but 
then they'll also be, I mean, they'll be adding so many more trees here that's that are going to soak up additional water too. It doesn't count towards your coverage situation, but it's definitely going to help for the stormwater, any stormwater that had been flowing this way um, and running into the road from here is going to be sucked up a lot more once those trees are mature. Definitely. We also have a treatment practice that doesn't exist on site and being proposed, which I think is a important, important yeah. part here. Um, so yeah, so the, as far as setbacks go, we're avoiding that due to discovery of a another section of the of the regs. Um, and um, as far as parking goes, I think we discussed that. Don't see any any issues or needs um, for um, anything other than really loading unloading zones. Um, uh, seems like there's a willingness um, to have the, to, for us to condition to have the uh, whole light removed um, after construction is complete. And um, um, as far as the ability to satisfy design and compatibility requirements, um, we talked some about the, you know, the neighborhood. Um, I don't, these buildings are, are, are short, you know, building height issues uh, uh, here. Um, and um, then as far as conditional use goes, um, you know, I think we've, we've satisfied that unless board members have any other co concerns there. I would make a motion if we might be at that point. Motion is, we would be welcome. <laughs> uh, motion to grant the request for conditional use in major site plan approval for the construction of two mini storage warehouses uh, at 190 River Street as presented in application Z-2023-0097 and supporting supplemental materials with the condition of removing the utility pole light after construction has been completed. Good. I'll, I'll second that. Motion by Sharon, uh, second by Kevin uh, for um, approval of the application uh, with uh, conditions. And um, I guess we can. Is there any discussion on the uh, on the motion? Seeing none, uh, we'll move into a roll call vote. Uh, Catherine, how do you vote? Yes. Kevin. Yes. Sharon. Yes. Alex. Oh. Yes. Oh, Joe. <laughs> yes. Uh, Michael. Yes. Uh, and Rob, myself, was yes. Uh, that motion is unanimously approved. Great. So, uh, Thank you very much. You are welcome. Thank you, and we'd really appreciate Meredith's guidance. She <laughs> did just a phenomenal job helping to guide this. So thank you very much for her help. Yes, very much. Thanks agree. for the compliment. We, 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 feel, we feel strongly that she represents us quite well. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I will turn around. We will turn around the decision as soon as we can. Um, and the lovely thing is because this is a, the condition on here is after completion, um, once the decision is signed, we will be able to issue the permit at the same time. So we will be in touch when we have both that signed decision and permit ready and available. Um, given the state of mail these days, um, and because this would be mailed out to a Montpelier address, I'm going to suggest that I email what you when it's ready and have somebody come and pick it up versus us trying to do certified mail, if that's okay. That'd be great. <laughs> okay, great. So when, when you come to pick it up, you'll still need to sign a little like receipt so that we have that for the file. Um, but I mean, we, we actually, I don't even know if we've gotten our certified mail documentation again from the post office because it all got washed away. <laughs> wow. So, um, perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much for Thank your time. You. Yeah. Thank you for all your time, folks. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. On to the next. Uh, um, so we have uh, minutes to review for the um, 
August 7th meeting, which have enough people here to do so. Um, are there any amendments uh, or questions on the minutes? Did I not see the minutes somewhere? I mean, I'm sure they're fine, but they were in the package. They should be in the packet. Uh, let me make sure it's at the end. It would be, yep. So it's after, after and the all the Yep, and the electronic one, it's pages 54 and 55 of the electronic packet. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And make a motion to approve the minutes of August 7th. Second. By Sharon, second by Catherine. Um, okay, all those in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Didn't hear from Kevin. He wasn't here. He wasn't I wasn't here. here. Yep, he wasn't there. <laughs> All righty, perfect. Um, so um, that moves us to our uh, next order of business that got moved to the end of the meeting, um, which is the uh, annual elections of uh, chair and uh, vice chair. And um, I guess I'll say that uh, I am uh, uh, excited of the prospect of uh playing some uh, musical chairs here. <laughs> and um, uh, so um, I would- Rob, are you, are you, are you willing and able to serve another year term? Uh, I would gladly accept the nomination as uh, for the vice chair uh, position. For the vice chair. And Sharon, how are you feeling about all of this? I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Sounds like, well, I don't want to preclude all discussion, so I'll just be quiet for a minute. <laughs> I'll be blunt. Would you chair, Sharon? Yes, I would. Mm -hmm. Well, Sharon, I want to say how much we've appreciated your leadership this year, and as well as Rob, you've been such an amazing chair, and it's been a year with some big applications. So, Wanted to say thank you for all your service. Yeah, and absolutely. Also, thank you, Sharon, for your uh, yeah willingness to step forward in a leadership position. I agree with Rob that it's good to mix things up a little bit. But, Rob, I'm glad you're not – I hope you're not going anywhere because I think the board really benefits from all your knowledge of the regs and your, you know, passion for the mission. So. I will – go ahead, Sharon. I, I just want to say that I, you know, this is about one year back on the board for me, and that I just really appreciated working with everybody on the board, and I feel like it's we've just been really efficient and really thoughtful and really thorough, and I really appreciate Meredith and everybody on the board. I just think it's a good we're in a good spot. Meredith, uh, can I make a motion to do two positions at this with one vote? <laughs> I mean, or should we do I, it I think I think you should probably do it separately. It, okay. Really, you should. We should. We should do the one and then the other. So that being said, I would, uh, uh, with uh, enthusiasm, uh, nominate Sharon Allen to be the chair of the DRB for the next eleven months. We have a second. I'll do an enthusiastic second. <laughs> okay. And Meredith, can you remind us? I know I'm still claiming to be new two years in, but um, is it typically a, a one year term or is there a? Yeah, yep. that's a, that's a yep. standard. The the yep the the rules for the DRB are that every year they're supposed to be the chair and the vice chair are reelected um, or nominated. You go through elections for them. It's supposed to be in August, but with yeah. all the craziness, um, it got just sort of missed. So thanks for the refresher. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, so we have a motion on the table uh, to uh, elect Sharon as uh, the chair of the DRB um, effective the uh, next regular meeting. And um, how does Alex vote? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Joe? Yes. Kevin? 
Yes. Michael? <clears throat> yes. Uh, Rob, myself votes yes. Um, um, like and we can have, yeah, we can have Gene vote too because it's a, it's a, I don't, I don't think it hurts. Gene, I mean, how do you vote? Sh Sharon yes. is probably recusing herself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you don't have to. Uh, wonderful. Uh, okay. Well, congratulations, uh, Sharon. Uh, I really appreciate uh, stepping up to it, and uh, I'll be there for you. I will make another motion to uh, uh, elect uh, Rob Goodwin for the next year as the vice chair of the DRB. I'll second. And Sharon, you get to run this one. <laughs> or oh, you okay. said effective. You said effective next meeting, yeah, didn't you, Rob? Yeah. The motion. So. <laughs> so maybe we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Michael, how do you vote? Yes. Gene. Yes. Uh, let me see, Alex. Yes. Catherine. Yes. And I vote yes. Kevin. Yes. Is that everybody? I don't have all of them. On. Yeah. I think and Rob. Yes. Oh, thank you, Joe. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yep, gotcha. Oh, Joe. I'm sorry, Joe. Yeah. Okay. How do you vote, Joe? I vote yes. Great. That makes it unanimous. And Rob, you accept, right? I absolutely uh, accept. <laughs> I just want to thank everyone for uh, bearing with me, especially the folks that uh, you know stepped up to chair when we had multiple uh, recusals uh, and uh, on you know some very big applications. And uh, I think uh, what's what's really great, uh, I think different from definitely when I joined the board and a couple of years in, we have a, I think a very diverse group of skill skilled people on this board and. Uh, it's like one of my reasons why it's easy. I think that it's important that we don't you know, get in a position where there's there's no one to you know step up and carry the torch. Um, and I yeah. think that we can all sort of share in the leadership responsibilities here. Uh, we kind of do the city a solid and uh, keep things smooth and hopefully make Meredith's job easier. But I think she's just going to do amazing work regardless. And... Yeah, I think so. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Well, I, I just want to, I just want to commend everybody on the board for the hard work you put in. This is, it's not an easy job. And uh, there are times when it uh, is downright very frustrating, but we always seem to pull, pull through. And I particularly uh, want to extend a uh, congratulations to Sharon and to Rob uh, for stepping up to, for another year, of rather intense uh, uh, work for the board. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, our next uh, regular meeting is on the 18th of this month. Yep. Uh, are there any applications? Yes. Uh, and of course, my brain just completely fizzled out as to what those are. Give me a second. Um, I'm sorry. Did we put uh, my computer's going weird? Um, huh. It is the 18th, but the our pending applications page says 19th. I'll have to fix that. Um, so yes, we actually have a demolition of a historic structure application coming before the board on the 19th. So that application as submitted is available for review on that pending applications page that links in the left-hand column when you're on the agendas and meeting minutes page. Um, and it's a, a barn, um, demolition of a barn that's listed on the historic register. It's in pretty bad shape. Um, and so the the owner of the the residential building in front um, is requesting at this point to just demolish it and and create green space. He doesn't have a plan for building something new there right now, um, but it's right near the the property line. Is this right downtown? Um, it's on J Street, so it's not okay. right in the middle of downtown. Okay, um, it's in a in, structure. Yep, yeah, no, this is in a residential neighborhood. Yeah. Great. Well, I will not be there the next meeting. I'll be on a honeymoon in Italy. So 
<laughs> oh, that's so awesome. What a great place to go. Congratulations. You, you just got back that's from Norway. Right. How do you get away with this? <laughs> <laughs> You're in Africa. Mm. That's so Jeez. great, Rob. Where are you going in Italy? Sardinia. We're doing a bike oh, tour. Oh, so. that's awesome. Fun. Super cool. Well, yeah. let us know if you see any historic structures. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the historic structures, structures that we can demolish. <laughs> <laughs> well, this will, I, I think this next meeting will be a good one to work through the existing demolition provision. Again, um, we we do have, the, the planning department does have in its pocket plans to, to amend that provision. Um, but the zoning changes got all slowed down because of the flood um, and some changes that we had had drafted before are probably going to get tweaked potentially because of all the flooding and and new thoughts about where things should be built um as well as how to deal with buildings that may be historic but may be horrifically damaged at this point so um we've got to be really thoughtful about what we're proposing at this point for those zoning changes so that's all sort of gone into a, a slow back burner for a little bit while we reconsider everything and make sure we don't make any changes um that that are are not well thought through given recent history yeah recent history really kind of uh showed us that you know, a bunch of things we just never wanted to know about um uh, it's yeah. um yeah 500 yep. year floods happening every year <laughs> oh man yeah I, I don't, <laughs> yeah well we've got the the planning commission is is getting ready to to pick up that that baton again on all of their potential um tweaks to the zoning regulations so i will keep you as informed on that as i can um and try and make sure that i let you all know when when planning commission is having hearings on those when there's drafts available so that you can take a look at those um, because if any of you spot things that just don't seem like they could actually be administered, be applied in real life. That'll be important to know. Um, and several of you have different different kinds of experience um, and different perspectives to bring to those kinds of discussions. So um, please feel free to to get involved in those conversations um, as your as your individual selves. Um, well, I'll accept the motion to uh, adjourn. Everyone stay cool out there. Summer I fighting game. Yeah, so so well. yeah. <laughs> uh, I, can, I think you had four. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all those in favor of adjournment, say hi. Bye. 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 Bye.